Welcome back to Soft Hands Garage, where today we're going to be working on stuff again. We're back out in the shop. Yeah. Let's get some things done. We're going to work on the Chevy, the square body here, doing some stuff on the doors. Uh, lots of things wrong with those. And uh, honestly, it's going to take a couple of videos to get all this done. Just going to be up front with you. It's going to be a part two to this. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's good enough, decent enough. Uh, still probably almost 100 degrees today, but got the uh, swap cooler running and uh, it's good enough. So let's get to it. So this is all correct. This is the felt uh, for the door or the window channel. Uh, which is, man, that's nice looking. That's going to completely ruin the aesthetic. <laughs> but this is what I needed. This is perfect. This was the whole issue of the window not cranking and actually breaking the uh, original and then the replacement that Pop apparently had bought at one point. So this won't break anymore because I'm going to have this replaced in there. This is that stuff that goes behind the door card and so it's completely useless and i wasted however much money that was this is actually i went ahead and got it for it's missing on the driver's side it's now this is all window stuff for the passenger side the issues that are going on there this is uh the the driver's side works fine but it's missing this and from the uh auto parts store i had got they only had one uh, pin and bushing set so I have one pin and bushing set from for the other side door and then these two bushings for the one door. So at least I can get one door done, <clears throat> kind of figure out all the processes and uh, et cetera from that. And then I can order the other pin. I just need one more pin and bushing. So anywho, that's gonna be good. It's gonna give me something to do here. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, the T-Bird is clean. Looking pretty shiny. Um, I just couldn't take it anymore. It was still too hot to actually wash it. It was, you know, 105 degrees out, and I couldn't keep the water. Couldn't keep it wet. Literally, I had to just walk around with a hose in the rag uh, just to keep it from getting water spots all over it. And it's not the greatest, but it's way better. I couldn't take it looking at it anymore. So it's clean, uh, and. Uh, I'm thinking about selling it. I know it sucks, but I don't drive it. Four months out of the year, it's too hot. I got no AC in it. Uh, and then when I do drive it, I, I live in a place where I don't commute to work. I just, you know, I want to drive it distances. A minimum, like my brother's two hours away, two and a half hours away. I want to take that. I don't feel that comfortable with it. It's not that great of a driver as far as the power steering is just too, you know, old. It's loosey-goosey. I can maybe fix that. I could put the AC in uh, from Vintage Air. I should have put the Vintage Air in. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to say. When I first bought the car, the Vintage Air kit was $1,100 on sale. It is now $2,500. I got, at on a great day, I got a $12,000 car here with AC in it, okay? You know, so, I mean, I'm not saying if that was it and that, then I could drive it to Texas, great, but I'm never going to feel comfortable driving this car to Texas. Uh, you know, long distance driving is just not its forte at this point in its life. So, I'm not, I'm too practical. I'm just too practical. I can't have a car sit in the garage for four months and start it once a month you know drive it around the block to, just to make sure that it doesn't rot into the ground it's not me it's not the way i do stuff that's the kind of, that's not the kind of stuff i have i don't have uh you know trailer queens and i don't have show cars you know, I don't have the money for it. I don't have the, it's just not my thing. Even if I had the money for it, I don't think I could do it. I'm, I'm too practical. 
so I'm probably gonna sell it. But I am gonna do uh, the, the exhaust on it, the mufflers. So it's 10.30 in the morning. It's about 100 and I think that's probably one, 101 degrees in the shop, 10.30 in the morning. So it's not brisk out, <laughs> but I can deal with that. Okay, and it's gonna be 111 degrees uh, by Sunday and it's Friday. But the morning's cooled down a little bit. We got a, a little bit of rain and um, it just seemed to kind of knock the overall temperature down to where it's cool enough in the mornings to get some things done. So I'm gonna be trying to get some things done. Next week, supposed to be by the weekend, a high of about 100 even. Totally doable, that's gonna be nice. Really, for what it's been, it's gonna be nice in here. So that's really when I'm gonna get my stuff going here. Uh, I'm gonna keep ordering some parts too. I'm gonna get some, uh, get the brake shoes for uh, the GMC. Gonna get the uh, glass packs for the T-Bird so that I can just keep rolling once it does get to where it's, you know, usable in the shop. So let's get started. Okay, so here's how this works. Uh, you got the, this is the window channel that's messed up as you can see i've got this um window seal stuff in here which is what they sent me for anyway it's just foam you know and it's done fine keeping the window in and and stuff and being able to roll it up and down and everything but obviously it needs replaced so anyways the a lot of these depending on the year actually are a one piece that actually that go from here <laughs> and all the way down and, and into the door and just you have to take the whole thing out is what I'm trying to say and this is one piece so it's just this right here you know from from the bottom to the top so what I'm hoping is to be able to just take the wing window out and frame in order to replace this uh, you just it's kind of simple you got to three screws up on top here and then you have uh, a bolt in here and then I was wanting to say there's just one of these but I don't know which one or it's two I don't know I don't remember I'll have to see on that but anyway that that would be uh, all you need for the wing window to be you know dismounted and then you lean it back and pull it out through the open window but as you can see the then the glass for the main window is right here in the channel that's why we have to take the wing window out is because the windows in it otherwise we could just run the, the new uh, felt down in there but uh, that won't work obviously so either we have to take the window out or we got to take this out so Anyways, I'm hoping that this will just come out even, you know, because it kind of looked like if you could pivot it right there, and that's generally where it does pivot, it should do that. Otherwise, the whole window has to come out, and the, it's not a big deal to take the uh, whole window out. It's just that, you know, like it's this screw here, I think, in addition to the ones we got over here. But what it is is you've got then this other channel uh, felt that goes all the way around the window, and uh, down in here that has to come out because if it's in the channel you, what you have to do with a window is roll it all the way up <clears throat> take take all the uh take all the channel felt out roll the window up it has to run outside the door essentially and the only way to do that is not have the channel in it and then uh, you can disconnect it from the regulator because uh, it actually rolls past uh you know the window you know comes up out the regular regulator comes out the top and then you can slide out the window but anyways not a horrible thing if we have to do that it's just worried about this channel felt because it's kind of hardish and i'm worried about pulling that out and it breaking and having to replace that felt because i really didn't want to is what i'm trying to say then the other part of this is with the hinges, since I only have one set, I can only do one door. And so I'm trying to decide which one to do. 
uh, and I started remembering that the hinge on this side is broken. If I'd have remembered that before I ordered the pins and everything else, I would have just ordered it's like 20 bucks for the hinge. And um, But I didn't remember it. So anyways, my initial plan was to weld it. And so I'm probably going to have to do that. Well, the other thing then is I don't have any welding gas. Because <laughs> the last time I used it, I forgot to turn the bottle off and it leaks like a sieve. So I got to go get welding gas. And so that kind of makes the decision for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the driver's side. And this is, uh, you know, the thing that I got. Oh, here we go. But anyway, it's this one's just the pins. It, it's not nearly as bad as the other side, broken hinge. So we'll do that. We'll take this off, this door off, and uh, replace the hinge pins on it. All right, we're gonna wanna support the door with something so that once we get these old hinges punched out, you need to have it supported. And I was thinking that I might use this forklift and just poke it through the window but then I got to thinking that once the door was off it might want to kind of swing out and I mean it's a really easy simple thing if I you know because they don't need straps or anything and just you know put some padding or something on the on the forks I mean it would have quite a bit of swing before it I don't know. Let me hook it in there and see what it looks like. Uh. <coughs> yeah, it's not tall enough. No help. All that jacking it for nothing. By the way, it's 1.30 in the afternoon. And it was 10.30, 101 degrees. And I've had the whopper running since then. And it's 98 degrees right now. So I've it down three degrees. And the reason for that is, first of all, it's a lot hotter outside than it was at 10 o'clock this morning. And also because it's humid. And that's a swamp cooler. So, it only do so much. But it's fine, it's flowing, it's cool, I can kind of feel it. It's 98 degrees, under 100 degrees in here. It'll do. I am, however, having a problem keeping the camera running. Twice I've had to take it into the office and put it in the vent of the AC because it was overheating. Okay, I got it. But <clears throat> run through the wing window up front and then wrap it around the top here to spread it out a little bit. Got it pretty well centered right over the top. I mean, it's going to swing a little bit, but not enough to come back and hit the cherry pick here, I don't think. All right, I figured out a <clears throat> way to use this to make this come in handy here little extra support because started kind of worrying about the door jam there and um, so I shoved that floor mat in there so it doesn't bang against that make any dents or scratches and then this little bit of extra support here we ought to be pretty good and then these hinge bolts are 9 16 Okay, there we go. And she just sat here. I like that. <clears throat> so now what? Maybe move this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's move the whole door. Nice. 
kind of perfect. Just leave it right there. All right, now we got access to them. And I think I'm gonna go with the old cut them thing. Cut these here in the middle and then they're just easier to get out than trying to pound them out. All right, step 42. So this is kind of interesting. So what you've got here is, I don't know what you have exactly. Man, you can't see nothing here. Or makes it much worse. Something like that. Behind there you can see a rod poking down. And that roller pushes up against it. And then that rod is this right here. So it's pushing up against that. And when you open and close the door, apparently it push this is you know like a giant spring basically and pushes up against it and gives you your your lock in open position you know halfway and whatnot so that's pretty cool and that all seems to be fully functional in there could probably use a little lubrication i don't know we're going to take a closer look at that once we get the hinge off all right another thing we're looking at here is this see how that's wallowed out the rest of these this is a tight bolt here pretty tight very little movement and then this one down here has a little bit you can probably make it out so the solution to that is rather than using the bushing that comes with it brass or copper whatever that is, you actually drill this hole out in here and drive these into that hole. So it looks like probably that's what I'm going to have to do for at least that hole. We'll see. We'll get them out and look at it. nylon bushing in there. Hey, there's only one kit that actually provided the uh, little hole replacement deal there. I mean, if 
if that's going to fit in there tight, I don't know that you have to have those. I think they got to be worse than that. That's going to fit in there good. Both of these. And here's a closer look at our hinge and these rollers for the door stop. And uh, they, I would assume they're supposed to roll in here. There we go. We got one, a little bit of movement. There's not anything moving there. That's a, that looks really worn. Like there's very little left of this side. Oh, look at that's got original paint on it, like brand new. I don't really know what these are supposed to be doing but they're just supposed to catch and not necessarily turn I think you there's brand new on this side that both of them so just rolling these around to that side would seem to want to resolve that but I'm going to clean this up and lubricate it and see if maybe they are supposed to move so, oh my gosh, <laughs> look, at, look at the hat's not round. I'm probably going to have to be ordering a new hinge, which LMC, I just happened to look, 20 bucks, but they're out of this one. <laughs> they're out of stock on the left side. There's the right side one, but not the left side. Blast. Well, I can't find these anywhere. The replacement hinge, even with the date, <clears throat> for most places is a completely different style. So, I may be stuck putting these back on. All right, here's what's supposed to be happening. You've got that spring, this S-spring in here rod and these wheels are supposed to rotate as you open and close the door against that that has its spring you know it's it gives to some degree but the point is that these rollers are supposed to roll as you go across it and then it locks you know holds it doesn't lock but it holds in a position here halfway open and then fully open so these haven't been rolling for some time and I went ahead and cleaned them and, and oiled them and they will move but not centered like this this is how they're supposed to be you see the wheels centered on the stud the head here of the of the stud and then they got a spring clip behind it applying pressure so that it turns hard but it's supposed to turn well centered i can't even turn it and it doesn't matter if that's centered or not because the first time you open the door this is what's going to happen <laughs> and then as you can see from the other side it's been wearing into the bracket because you know once it got past teeth wore those down it started wearing into the bracket and of course the top of that stud head is is worn down where you just weren't even on teeth anymore. So it's just rolling over the metal now is what it's doing. So the only fix that I see for this is drilling these out. Does it have to be a shaft, an unthreaded shaft that went through from the top to the exact basically bottom of this uh, wheel and then a threaded shaft that came out here and then I guess you could weld the nut on but I don't have a machine shop so the odds of me finding something that was perfect to fit this potentially even wallowed out not even round anymore hole unthreaded and then a threaded that starts exactly 
at the end of this, you, you got to have that machine. There's no, the odds of finding that are zero. I'm not going to go, th I'm going to go through my screw bin and find nothing. You got to machine that. And that figures because I thought this was just going to be, hey, I'll have the door off for a day. Pull the T-Bird out, pull the truck in, swap out the hinges, hinge pins on one door and be done. And we got a perfectly working door and that's not happening. Son of a bee sting. Well, the good news is uh, there's no problem finding the hinge. All I had to do was put my glasses on and I could see that they were the same hinge and they're all over the place. They're of course not all over the place at any of the parts stores locally, so it's got to be ordered. But uh, no surprise there. I mean, the only surprise with that is that I they didn't say they had it and then I went in to find out they don't have it. They actually say they don't have it, so no big deal i guess i mean the problem is that uh, you know i'm I, no taking this out of the shop uh for a little while till i get those the hinges i did go ahead and just order the hinge upper hinge for the other side as well because i say i know it's broken uh it's worse say and see clang clang Bang, boom <laughs> and it's because it's broken yeah it's broken on the door side you can see that piece in there uh, while I'm waiting for the part to come in uh, this so this hinge has to come off here and what you have <clears throat> is you've got these two uh, outside bolts and then this is an ins from the inside bolt and the access for that is behind the vent here. So I gotta pull the vent off uh, to get to that one and then I'll just pull those out. And of course, the new hinges do come with a new spring too, which is good because this one's from being uh, rubbed on metal to metal. It's got a pretty good groove in it. All right, well that's out. Uh, it's gonna be kind of interesting because there's a gap in here and so you have to get it from here to the hole without dropping it in here, because where does that go? I don't know. Yeah, I think this duct was glued on. Got to be kidding me. Is there another way to get into that thing? There it is. Under there, painfully. But I th I've, I'm afraid of losing that duct on there. That'd be a real pain. Uh, I'm gonna try and go at it from underneath. So that's it right there. It's got a cap on it. And you can see the duct on the top of the screen here. That's, that's what I'm trying to avoid. So I can get to it-ish, but I gotta come around the underside of the dash right here where it curves around in order to get up in there it's not going to be easy it'd be way easier through the vent but i don't want to tear stuff up so all right i'm gonna give it a go all right i don't know if you can see this but this is ridiculous <laughs> trying to use the camera to do this but I just want to show a little extension on it and it's gonna work and I'll show you when it's done Two hundred years too late. Okay, so there's the other half of the hinge, and if we can make it out, but that is pretty groovy. Where it's just been rubbing metal to metal for 
all that time. So you'd probably want to replace this <coughs> spring anyway, and, and uh, you can do that. Just replace the spring, but again, it came with both halves uh, here, and I had to get those. Had to get this side for sure, and um, so I came with both of these already assembled. I don't have to do the hinge pin, which I've got extra, but I only got one extra because I actually only had three hinge pins. So anyway. Works out fine. I got a $10 hinge pin that I'm not going to use, but whatever. Won't be the first time I wasted money on parts. But so, so uh, there's really nothing wrong with this hinge, but I'm not going to go <laughs> rebuild <laughs> and put new hinge pins. The whole unit comes in. It's going to be black, which, you know, this was obviously painted the color of the truck. That part sucks. But anyways, I'm going to keep it. This is going to have to be replaced anyway. So you're going to have black on that one, and then you got a blue one. Whatever, they're both going to be black. So last time I was in here, I did, uh, I was cleaning this heck out of this dash. <clears throat> it was pretty rough. And I had a toothbrush and the cleaner and cleaned the whole thing. And then I didn't have any treatment interior treatment so it's just been dry and so I just came back in and it's just dusty as I'll get out again you know you just I get it you know it's better than rust but we got the dust and there's no stopping it so two months later you couldn't even tell I cleaned it really so uh, I got the toothbrush and the cleaner and I redid it again and that's about as clean as I'm gonna get it so I'm going to try this new stuff that I got. Look, it says new right on it. Uh, hybrid turtle ceramic graphene. Didn't know they made ceramic stuff for interior cleaner or treatment. Anyways, let's see what it does. Ooh, look at that. <clears throat> but it's soaking it in and it really ooh gosh it feels softer hmm. yeah it's soaking it in I'm probably going to have to hit that a couple of times but I ought to protect it and keep it uh, from doing this anymore which isn't bad for an Arizona dash believe me All right, while I'm waiting for parts, we're gonna go ahead and do this here. one in here of course can't reach it with the power tool or a long enough screwdriver to have lever leverage speaking of power tools my first milliwatt k uh set i actually got the impact driver as well uh don't have it out here but two batteries the drill and the impact driver 160 bucks Pretty standard, kind of a little bag and a, and a charger. So, first of uh, probably many one of these days, I'll just keep adding pieces like most people do. It's like these are the guys that have both of them. Theoretically, this should go. Theoretically, this should go. It ain't going to happen. I can't. The window in there isn't going to let me do the thing. Unless these are part of it. not. Oh no. 
it just broke like I thought it would. One thing after the other is what you get when you try to do something. It's not going to come with the window in it anyway. So the whole, whole thing's got to come out. Unbelievable. You try to do a good thing and it bites you right square in the butt. So this thing, yeah, it's as dry as Betty White's back, as a guy would say. I did only break it in one spot, but it is broken. The rest of it's okay. It's just so dry and brittle <clears throat> as compared to, obviously, the new one. Very rubbery. Very rubbery and flexible. I guess I'm going to get another part ordered. <laughs> One after the other. Constant snowball of parts. Ordering. The piece that I broke fell off. Outside the door, theoretically, this will come up. No, no, it won't. I've seen this done, but I think it's different on this window than the one I was seeing done. Come on! There's a groove in the track right in there in the middle of the screen. <clears throat> and that roller to the left needs to come through that groove to let the window out on that side and then it just has to come off the completely off the end on this other side I don't know it's like geometry you know and I didn't really I don't think I took geometry in school so I'm screwed I'm messing around with that trying to figure out the geometry and I was able to slide the window back quite a bit so I thought, let me try this again, and it just kept hitting something like I when I thought it was the window before, before I took all this out. And it was just the tip of the wing window. And, uh, you know, the angle looks like I probably could have just gotten it out without the window coming out. So, <clears throat> sure enough, I could do it. without taking the window completely out at least. And there's that. 
and I still have to get the new piece for that. So, um, whatever. Whatever. I got this out. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's get this thing out. That's that. I guess that's just the top. So it can't slide down. Got a trim tool. Let me get that. Why does that look short? Oh, because it is. <laughs> I guess they decided you didn't need felt all the way down to the bottom. I. Whatever. So it looks like if you start it in unevenly, it's going to stay uneven and there's really nothing you can do about it. So, pull this back out. There you go, done. Now wait for parts. Well, all I got left is my weather stripping for 10 bucks. And I gotta figure out where all that needs to go, where it's not gonna interfere with stuff. And then I got the, the door felt for that, but the Door card has to come off for that, so um, that's got to go back on before I do that. I'm not going to do it. Hang in there. So that's it. I'm down to parts orders, and that's going to take who knows how long. Uh, probably at least till next weekend. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, this is part one. Uh, part two, we're gonna finish the doors. I got to get them done because I'm I'm using it now. If the trucks, uh, you know, the weather's good for taking the truck out without air conditioning. Though I gotta say, I did uh, <laughs> turn on the AC in the parking lot of Lowe's two days ago, and it didn't screech. And we actually used it. Um, it's probably a good half hour of driving, and it did it. It cooled there. It's perfect. It's awesome. Uh, the next day I turned it on and it just screeched to high heaven, but, you know, whatever. It's going anyway, but it's at least got some use here and there. Yeah, so we're going to um, definitely finish up the doors because, uh, like I say, i got to use it. I want the T-Bird back in here because uh, being outside and it's clean, it won't last long. So like to have it back in here most of the time. Get that done. Might have, depending on how much video I got of the doors uh, by the time I get that one out. Uh, if there's not enough to make a full video, I may attack on the brakes for the GMC that are, we're working on. The rear brakes on that. So, anyways, it'll be a good one. You know it will. See you next time.